years and years and years. Uh, and I would, my question is, what would you say is the foundation to cultivate healing and train everyone to pray for the sick and walk in power? Yeah, um, you know, Dr. Wilson shared something at the beginning of this that I thought was really uh, helpful is that, you know, there's so much mystery in healing. There's so much mystery in, you know, one person gets healed and the other doesn't. And, you know, you usually have two options. Yeah, you keep going or you just stop. And so I think one of the, the dynamics of a foundation for a culture, for an environment to embrace it is, is you're, you're looking for momentum. You're looking for, okay, we had a breakthrough in this area. So let's just go after this a thousand times if necessary until we get the second one. And I, you know, I think the idea of momentum in our culture is pretty powerful. I don't know if we use that word as much in the context. Uh, we do use it in the sense that, I mean, if we analyze the last 20 years, if I can just be analytical for just a second, the last 20 years, 25 years since my parents came to Bethel and what stakes they drove in the ground, specifically around healing and God is good. You look at the stats from the last 20, 25 years, the kinds of miracles, the levels of miracles, um, the amounts of, I mean, just all of the above from 25 years ago to today, the stats are honestly astounding. And, but that requires commitment. It requires, it requires steadfastness. It requires like, we are not going to change the subject. And, and until someone decides to not change the subject, then we'll just keep moving on to different subjects. So I think for, for my parents and the team, you know, that my parents raised up, especially back in that day, they said, this is the subject and we're not changing it. <laughs> and they were just this relentless, they're just relentlessness about it. So, you know, 20, 25 years later, specifically Bethel, I mean, it goes farther than 25 years from my dad, but I'm just specifically speaking to Bethel. Now you've got gen, multi-generation that are caught up in that momentum. Because now we've got 25 years of data, if I can use that language. We have 25 years of testimonies. And it's like, why would we ever change the subject? Why would we move on to something else? We can add subject, but let's not ever leave this one. And so I think that's one of the dynamics of a culture is when, especially when you come into it at a young age, especially your formative years from an age standpoint and your spiritual standpoint. So some people are coming into the kingdom and that's so formative. The first, you know, the first few years of someone saying yes to Jesus is so formative that if someone can get exposed to that momentum in those formative years, then it's game over. This thing won't stop. And so I think when you start seeing that increase, and so I think it's that commitment, it's that steadfastness. And then I think the other thing, if I can say one more thing, is recognizing the disruptive nature of signs and wonders and miracles. Mm. It, it's incredibly disruptive. It, it's so disruptive that someday when we get to heaven, we're going to see actually how disruptive a miracle is, was, et cetera. We're going to see like, oh, I didn't realize that, that miracle created such a disruption in the unseen realm that I thought it was just in the seen realm, but in the unseen realm. And so here's the idea of a disruption. I think it's crucial. And Jesus demonstrated in his life we see, we see him doing walking in signs and wonders, power and wisdom. So because we're talking about healing, I want to use the word power, that that disrupted the elite part of society, the upper parts of society, the wealthy, the elite, and it also disrupted the lowest, most impoverished parts of society, and it also disrupted everything from the left to the right. What's my point? is sometimes I think we limit healing or power to a certain part of culture and society. And we have to recognize that Jesus disrupted all of society. So the relevance of power and signs and wonder isn't, uh, isn't to just for one part of culture. You know, we have Robbie talking about some of the most hardest places in the world. Well, the relevance of power in that context is just as relevant as it here in America. I mean, it, it, so it can't, we can't limit it to certain countries or parts of culture. We have to recognize it actually takes a collective whole. So anyway, I'm, I'm, those are just some thoughts I have around just its momentum, its commitment, steadfastness, not changing the subject, and recognizing this is super disruptive, and let's be a part of this thing. So those are some thoughts. Yeah, so good. Uh, Mark, 